everybody. Let me, we're just a minute or two from starting. Let me start streaming to Facebook. <laughs> this is fun watching me click around like this. Technology is exciting. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Good stuff. All right. Need that. Here we go. Lovely to see so many of you here. We've got about two minutes till we start. So feel free to, you know, get something to drink. You can settle in. You might want to get a pad and paper in case you want to take notes or there's anything that sort of comes to you as we're talking today. Uh, great, great to see you. Oh, thank you guys so much for coming. Uh, let me know that you can hear me and, and see me okay, can't will you? Um, just let me know there's not any tech challenges. So we have about a minute until we officially start. And if somebody just wants to type into the chat to say hello. Yeah. Well, Oh, great. Um, this is so exciting that you guys are taking the time to, to be here with me like this. I, I think it's amazing that um, you would show up for something having no idea what it is, <laughs> or not much of an idea what it is anyway. Uh, I think that's really, I think that's really great. I really appreciate your faith in me. Um, good, and there's Crystal on the Facebook page. Hi, Crystal. Great, good. All right, I've got top of the hour. So here's what's going to happen is I'm going to, um, yeah, I'm going to do something I've never really done before in this exactly this way. I'm going to pray. Um, so I invite you to participate in whatever way it feels good to you. If you just want to close your eyes and breathe, if you want to, you know, follow along. If you just want to tune out until I get to the Q&A portion, that's fine too. I don't have an investment in this. Um, I just have a lot of curiosity. So, you ready? We're going to start with our breathing. We're going to um, inhale for a count of four, hold for a count of seven, and exhale for a count of eight. And we'll do that three times. I'll count us through it. Um, so yeah, just shake your body a little bit. Like shake your hands, let your body know, oh, something different is happening. And um, let your belly go really poochy soft, like the right, like that. You can drop your shoulders down and back. You can loosen your jaw. If you want to hold your face or put your hands on your chest or hold your hands, it's, it's nice to make a little contact with this body that loves you so much. And yeah, I'm just going to breathe and I'm just going to pray in whatever way it happens to come out for as long as it does. And then I'll, we'll talk, you know, I'll take your questions. We can talk about whatever you want to talk about. Okay. You ready? Let's inhale. Two, three, four. Hold. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Exhale. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale, two, three, four. Hold, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale, two, three, four. Hold, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Creator, Mother, Father, God, we come to you in this very moment in the perfection and the glory of this moment, which is all there is. We feel ourselves in the center of this moment. We feel our bodies, our hearts beating, our blood moving, our breath moving. We feel you moving through us as us. 
Each moment is filled with the divine. Each moment is pregnant with possibility. And we lean in to that possibility. We see it shimmering in front of us. We feel the energy of it from our toes to the top of our head. We are bathed in starlight. We are made of star stuff. We know that the same thing that makes up the stars and the planets and the rocks and the trees runs in our DNA too. We are made up of the same elements. There is only one thing and we are all a part of it. So we feel the interconnectedness of all things. We feel all the energy of the people here right now. We feel the energy of the people watching this in the future. We feel the energy of the rocks and the trees and the animals. We feel the energy in the air. We lean back into it. We trust that we are supported and known. We trust that we are valued and valuable. We know that we can never outshine creation. We know that we are never too much for the world, nor are we too little. We are exactly right, exactly as we are made to be, unfolding like a flower, destined to be more fully ourselves in every moment. We are so grateful for this moment. We lift up into the center of the circle anyone in pain, anyone suffering, anyone who feels separate or alone. We know that there is no such thing as alone. We are all one thing. We are all together. But the mystery of our mind can lead us to believe that we are alone. And there is glory and sorrow in aloneness. We thank you for this moment of openness, of generosity, of presence, of people coming together to explore what is true. With so much gratitude for this breathing breath, for this present moment, for this beautiful planet and all the beautiful souls that inhabit it, we say thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. So now you know, that's how I pray. That's one of the ways I pray. Um, I've done that for groups, for mastermind groups, for, um, you know, in, in rooms, in small rooms. Um, I've never just turned on the camera and done it publicly. Uh, it, how do I, it felt a little, uh, it feels okay. It feels okay. I will tell you it doesn't, I was really uh, nervous and uncomfortable before this. I woke up, I sent you guys an email at four. I was up from one thirty to about 4.30 this morning. Um, and as I was prepping for this, Luke, some of you know Luke, my, my sweetheart, my, my person, my partner, uh, Luke goes, I think it's so cute that you still get nervous about these things. <laughs> like, yes, it's adorable. Um, but I do. And, and I, what I wanted to say to you was uh, that feeling of discomfort that I was having was part of why I knew I had to do this. Um, it was part of how I knew I had to just trust and lean into it. Like the fact that it made me feel slightly nauseated and like very much like it was a bad idea. <clears throat> That's pretty much what tells me it's a good idea. So um, I urge you into that too, into that discomfort, into that sacred discomfort. What are you resisting? What doesn't feel good to you that you know you have to be doing anyway? Um, don't wait to feel good. Don't wait to feel confident. Don't wait to feel ready. Don't wait to feel like it's the right thing. It's not going to be, and you're not going to know. And in fact, so the idea for doing this, this sort of Sam unscripted thing had been, has been around for, I don't know, two years, maybe people have been talking to me about it and different people, like all like in my life, people sort of pop up and be like, you know what, you should, you should do more Facebook lives. You should be more. And I was like, yeah, I hear you. Mm, not sure it's really right for me. And, uh, 
And then finally I just kind of surrendered to it and was like, okay, okay, it's right. Let's just, maybe not be right, but let's just try it. Let's just do it. And um, I did one sort of in relationship with a launch and that was kind of fun, but you know, it was launch related. I was still kind of selling things, um, which is fine. I love selling things. Don't get me wrong, but it had a, there was an agenda to, to what I was doing. Um, and then I did one last week that didn't have an agenda. I just showed up with no notes and I just took questions and that was fine. It was a lot of fun. Some of you were here for it. The recording I think is still on the Facebook page or on YouTube. Uh, but, um, but something was missing. I knew it wasn't quite right. And then I was in mastermind and this is another important part is you've got to get with really smart people who you love and admire and who love and admire you so you can discern the truth about what's happening. You need a group. Um, so find your, find your tribe. You know, my group lives all over the United States. We're not in the same place, but we meet regularly and it really helps. And as we were talking, it became clear to me that what I was, what was missing was the prayer part. What was missing was the spirituality. And then I was really mortified. Like I really didn't want to do that, <laughs> but, um, but I knew I had to. So uh, that's what this is. So I'm committed to trying this for the next, um, I don't know, while. Most Friday mornings at 10. We will not be here next Friday because I'm going to be out of the country um, with an unreliable internet connection. So I'm not going to do it next Friday in between Christmas and New Year's. But in starting in January, Friday mornings, 10 a.m. Pacific time, Sam Unscripted will go for as long as it goes. So that's what I know about this. Um, uh, tell me, what questions do you have? What are you noticing? What are you wondering about? Uh, Trisha says, the goddess is alive and magic is afoot. You are a goddess. This is exactly what I needed today. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, Trisha, I'm so glad. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. Um, there's another chat in here, too. Uh, the teaser was magnetic. Oh, good. I'm glad. Shannon says, namaste. Thank you. Namaste, Shannon. Uh, so it says, you should feel more than okay. That was authentic and inspired. Trust it even more. It's coming through you beautifully. Oh, thank you. Uh, greetings and gratitude for this, Sam. I echo exactly what Amy and Carol shared. Oh, thank you. Thank you, guys. It, it means a lot to me to have your, have your backup. So what can I do for you? What, what, are, what are you wondering about? <coughs> Pardon me. Where are you stuck? <coughs> I'm not sick. I... Um, I've just been breathing smoky air for a couple of weeks. Um, good. Let me check on Facebook too. Um, you know, you, you have me here. So Crystal says, beautiful. Thank you, Crystal. Um, Cassandra says, just what I needed now. Good. Ingrid says, thank you. Thank you, says Cassandra. Oh, you're welcome, you guys. Thank you for being here. Uh, Good. So what are you, what are you wondering about? This chat is kind of appearing and disappearing for me. I don't know why. Uh, yeah. What's, what's, what's on your mind? What are you, what's troubling you? Where are you stuck? Okay, here's Cooper. Be a TV star Cooper. Okay. Um, it's not surprising. They often, the cats love the energy whenever I um, pray or meditate. They probably am just sitting still. So they like that, but, uh, but they like the they like the vibe. Um, so I'm curious, what are you holding out on? What do you know you're being called to do, or invited to do, or invited to at least try to experiment with, to um, put into beta? Um, and do you want to commit a commitment to that now? Do you want to say in front of this group, like, okay, I'll try it. Okay, I'll try it. Um, Oh, but what I wanted to say before is that I didn't know until I did it the first time that what was missing was the prayer thing. So don't be thinking like you have to have it perfect inside of your mind or know exactly what it is ahead of time. You're kind of not going to know. You know, you have to have the experience of it before you can say, oh, I see. I, I, I know now at least another piece of it. And there, I'm sure there are more pieces that will be revealed as we do this experiment together. Um, so don't... Um, yeah, don't trick yourself into thinking that it's supposed to be more perfect than it is, um, or that you're supposed to know more than you know. You know, you just know enough to start. So you start. Uh, Margaret says, really enjoyed the prayer. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. I'm so glad. 
So what's going on that made you feel like it's just what you needed? Where, where are you? Um, what was, what's happening for you that you feel like, oh yeah, I need to remember that every moment is perfect. I need to remember that um, I'm co-creating my life with the divine. What's going on that uh, has you troubled in your mind or feeling separate or alone? Or, um, or is it just the day-to-day -day feeling worn down and, and just forgetting to notice how beautiful air and water is, <laughs> how beautiful breathing in and out is, how beautiful um, the intricacies of our mind is, how beautiful our dreams and nightmares are. Micah says, beautiful prayer. I just finished my morning meditation an hour ago. Nice. Cheryl says, thank you, Sam, for sharing your most vulnerable self. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure why it makes me so shy. I really, I, was, I, I would rather dance around in my underwear or talk about my sex life than share my spiritual self. I started to talk about it some in Start Right Where You Are. I sort of came out of the closet as a spiritual person. <laughs> I mean, it had always been there in the underpinnings of my work. It was always sort of the deep, the, the foundation of my work. Um, but I never really talked about it overtly. And so in Start Right Where You Are, I started to talk about it overtly. And apparently I'm needing to talk about it more. Uh, partly I just feel like I, I want to add this element to the conversation. You know, there's so much, particularly on Facebook, there's so much outrage and disappointment and name calling and heartbreak and, um, you know, people feeling upset about the way the world is going. And, and I don't mean to take that away from anyone, feel as upset as you are, but I also want to remind everyone, like, it's okay it's okay. Politics cannot interfere with your divine expression. And sad people making sad decisions. <laughs> you know, you, you have the power to protect yourself uh, from even a really toxic environment. You don't have to participate in toxicity just because it's there. Um, and, and the circumstances of your life do not dictate the meaning of your life. Let me say that again. The circumstances of your life do not dictate the meaning of your life. Your circumstances may not be exactly what you want them to be right now. They're probably not. But that doesn't mean that your life has any more or less meaning than it ever has. So, Whatever your circumstances, if you're struggling financially or struggling physically or struggling spiritually or struggling artistically, understand that the struggle part is kind of a choice, right? You can opt to have your current circumstances and not be struggling. Uh, in fact, it's one of the things I say to myself a lot is, what if this just isn't a problem? And it's a real spiritual challenge. What if this just isn't a problem? You know, financial disaster strikes. I just had a huge unexpected bill hit yesterday. Um, and I'm not exactly sure <laughs> how things are gonna work out financially this month, but things are gonna be a little tight. Um, but I don't have to take that on as, as, some, as something that means something about me or the value of my work. It doesn't have to be bad. It can just be a challenge. It can just be an opportunity for me to look at things differently and go, well, all right, so if I needed to bring in $150,000 in the next two weeks, how could I do that? Where's my opportunity for that? If that's what the need is, then that opportunity must be there. Now, as it happens, I don't have to bring in $150,000 in the next two weeks. Um, but I wanted to use a big number to demonstrate to you that the angels don't care about decimal points, right? If that's what was needed, then that's what I could do. Because the problem wouldn't be there if the mechanism to solve the problem wasn't there too. Right? Um, you know, we just... 
lived through the Thomas fires, which is the third largest wildfire in the United, in California history. Um, it was weeks and weeks of flames outside the window, um, of smoke in the air, of being evacuated, of being packed to be evacuated, of neighborhoods around us being evacuated. We could see the flames. What if this just isn't a problem? What if this just isn't a problem? It's a sort of radical acceptance and it doesn't mean that I wasn't stressed out or that I wasn't scared. I was, but, um, but I also wasn't fighting it, right? Like Byron Katie says, don't argue with reality. <laughs> You're gonna lose every time. Do not argue with reality. This is what's happening. And if I believe that we live in a benevolent universe, then it must be good or at least indifferent. It's certainly not about me. So if it's time for the hills to burn, then it's time for the hills to burn. Where's my opportunity? What am I learning? What am I sharing? What did I find out? What I found out is that I have a community of incredibly generous people who we must have had 30 people say, come stay with us. People I don't even know, strangers saying, come, come stay. You know, if you need a place to come, come. If you need anything, let us know. How beautiful is that? Yeah, let's see what's on the chat here. Um, so far, this chat sort of things come in and out. Shannon says, that is beautiful. The circumstances of your life don't dictate the meaning of your life. That's right, that's right. Carol says, making some very big changes, terrifying, probably the worst time of year to do this. No, it's the perfect time of year to do this. How do we know? Because this is when it's happening. This is when it's happening. So it's perfect. And the solstice, like there's a lot of good reasons to, to lean into change this time of year, particularly deep internal change. But um, it's, never, it's never a bad time to have your life happen. You know, you may feel out of sync with the rest of the world and that's, that can be a lonely feeling. Um, you know, again, we're tribal animals. We look to each other for like, how am I doing? <laughs> and when you're doing something that nobody else is doing, that can feel isolating. But no, it's a beautiful time for change. And it doesn't have to be terrifying, right? And I really encourage you to look at your language. There might be some portion of it that's terrifying, but there's probably some portion of it that's exhilarating. And there's probably some portion of it that's fine. And there's probably some portion of it that's fantastic. Like you've been waiting for this for ages. You're relieved that it's happening. You're rejoicing that it's happening. Get more specific when your language. Don't just paint everything with a terrifying brush because you're gonna, you're gonna stress yourself out and when you're stressed, you're not gonna see opportunity. You're not gonna hear the loving remarks. You're not gonna feel the energy of the world pulling you forward. You're not gonna get those little intuitive hits. Stay as relaxed as you can, right? Stay as relaxed as you can. Um, Micah says, embracing my spirituality in the open this past year has been incredibly liberating for me. Huge props to you, Sam, for being so courageous and sharing that prayer with us all. Thank you. I appreciate that. There's another one above this that's not letting me see. It's so funny. Why is it like this? Let's see if I can reload. Oh, pop out. What does that do? Oh, that's better. Um, Jin says, the circumstances of your life do not dictate the meaning of your life. I needed to hear this reminder. Thank you. Thank you for saying this, and thank you for your prayer in this conversation. Sure, of course. Uh, let's see. Uh, S says, I think this might be Sally. says, uh, I'm so, so sorry that I've had to miss all the group adventures here and on Facebook to date. Serious challenges the past few months. Yes, I realize this is exactly what I should have been able to do during this time. Loving your books and your brilliant emails and poems and now prayer. You're a gift and never doubt the incredible impact your work has for so, so many of us. Well, thank you for saying that. That, that means a lot to me. Um, that's what we all want, right? Is for our work to matter, for us to feel like our work matters. Um, Carolyn says, I'm seeing that separation is the source of my feelings of not being enough and scarcity. Yes, yes, exactly, Carolyn, well spotted. Um, Yeah, we cannot be separate from the divine. We cannot be separate from each other. You know, one of my practices, I, um, 
is this phrase, there I am. This can make me cry. Whenever I see, um, whenever I'm feeling alone or, or I'm seeing people do things that I disagree with or that I disapprove of, I just think, there I am. I look at them as though they're a mirror. I see myself in them and I think, there I am. That's me right there. That's me. There I am. And noticing how I soften when I think that, like, oh, right. I've been afraid and said harsh things too. I've, I've, you know, I've believed things that were misguided. I've, I've, I've said things I shouldn't. I've, I've pointed fingers um, as though there was blame. Um, I was just thinking this morning about um, someone I know who our last interaction was really harsh. She was really harsh with me. And, um, and I can't seem to let it go. And I don't know what to say back to him. Um, and I know that it's not him that I'm having this problem with, right? It's me. There's part of me that's holding on to this harshness. There's part of me that maybe even loves feeling a little indignant and a little hurt and a little martyred. You know, how could he have been so mean to me, right? Why won't he forgive me? Why was he, you know, I, I think he was just kind of in a mood and lashed out. That's sort of my guess of the situation, but, um, but maybe not. Maybe I did something horrible and deserve to be lashed out to. I don't know. Um, but really noticing how I hold on to that and how then every time I see him in my Facebook feed, I'm like, <sighs> you know, like I'm having a whole little three act play in my mind about my feelings around the fact that this guy was, you know, displeased with me at one point. That's me doing that to me. That's not him. He's not here in the room. I'm taking something that happened one time, almost a year ago now, probably. He said one thing, one time, ages ago, and I have kept it alive every single time. I've turned it into a permanent condition. That's me doing that. I have kept that alive. And for what? For what? So that I can enjoy feeling martyred and misunderstood? So that I can um, be reminded of my own frailty? I don't know. But I have the opportunity to heal that anytime. I don't have to keep hanging on to that. It's separateness. It's the illusion of separateness. And for some reason, I'm diving into it every single time it shows up. Crystal says, I had a reminders, a realization that I was trying to be involved or solve a problem that is not mine. Heard that kind, quiet voice say, let's go to work on your project. Then I hopped on Facebook and here was more support and love to do my creative projects. Yes, Crystal, yes, exactly, exactly. Um, you have to be very careful about solving other people's problems for them because you can't. You can't. You can't fix them, you can't help them. You can't solve them. You can't even really encourage them. It cracks me up a little bit when people are, um, you know, particularly creatives, you guys, my people, get a little like huffy around sales strategies or marketing strategies. Like, well, I don't want to manipulate anyone. It's like, really? Like you could. Have you tried to manipulate someone recently? It can't be done. <laughs> like. Like you can't nag yourself into doing things. You can't manipulate yourself into doing the things that you know you really want to be doing. So I don't know what power you think you magically have over other people um, that you can make somebody do something that they don't want to do. My experience is that people do exactly what they want to do pretty much 100% of the time. And the things they don't want to do, they pretty much don't do. Pretty much 100% of the time. So when you accept that responsibility of like, oh yeah, I am 100% responsible for my actions and my life. I do what I want to do. Um, it may not feel like wanting, it may not feel like desire, it may feel like, ex like I'm responding to external pressure or like I'm doing it to make someone else happy, but they're not making me do it. I'm making me do it. Um, 
and then the freedom to let other people be 100% responsible for their choices. You know, as I said to someone recently, I am not in the husband improvement business anymore. He can do exactly what he likes anytime he wants to do it. Who was I in conversation with? I think it was on a call where somebody had, um, oh, it was, it was on our expert call this month with Laura Gisborne. She was talking about her husband who um, she knew for years that he had a heart problem and they weren't finding it in the checkups. They weren't find, the doctors weren't finding it, but she knew inside that he did. And she kept sort of trying to urge him to be, take, make heart healthier decisions. Um, and finally he had a heart event, I think a heart attack um, and has been in recovery and, and, you know, he's doing great, but as she's quite clear that, you know, he, his heart won't last maybe as long as, as we might hope it would. Um, but she realized that she couldn't keep, you know, before the, before his heart attack, she couldn't keep pressuring him to do something he wasn't willing to do, to respond to a problem that he didn't think he had. And she was like, do I want to be right or do I want to be married? <laughs> you know, do I want to be right or do I want to be at peace? She needed to let him have the responsibility for his life. It's not her responsibility even though he's her husband and she adores him, right? But you gotta stop, you gotta let people be who they are. Lorraine says, thank you for sharing the prayer, Sam. I do feel so alone right now. My mom passed end of November and I miss her so much. I know I just have to be with the grief. Don't feel like doing anything. So exhausted from these last few months of mom's life. Oh, Lorraine, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for your loss, it's very hard. Um, yeah, I'm just feeling the heartbreak of that. I think there's a lot of people on this who share that, the losing someone, the process of losing someone, the process of being a caregiver. Um, it's, it's hard. It's really, it's just really hard. Um, but it is also inevitable, right? If you love people, you're going to lose people. Um, you know, it's the heartbreak of having animals, right? So you'll probably outlive them and it's going to break your heart. And I think it might be part of our covenant with each other that we enter into relationship with each other and we say, I am willing to have my heart broken by you. I am willing to, um, to lose you. I am willing to be open to the pain of loving you so much that when you're not here, I'm sad. And that's a very spiritually evolved step, right? That's, you know, that's, that's what the angels do. So to not necessarily characterize grief as bad or feeling alone as bad or feeling um, disconnected as bad or feeling or missing someone as bad. Like if you take away the judgment that, oh, I shouldn't be feeling this way, but rather saying, oh yeah, I noticed that I am feeling this way and really lean into it. And also notice again, like we're talking about with Carol, like notice how it changes, notice the subtleties of it. Because you're not feeling alone and missing her 100% of the time right? There's part of you, again, there's part of you that's probably relieved. There's part of you that's probably thrilled to bits. Like, oh, thank God she's not here to see this. <laughs> right? right? There's part of you that might feel some freedom. There's part of you that might feel some exhilaration at like, oh my gosh, who am I without the person of my mother next to me? You have an opportunity to become a slightly different version of yourself. I have a friend, um, oh, this is gonna make me cry, okay. I have a friend named Mary Seward Scruggs. We were in college together. We knew each other at Northwestern and we're friends in Chicago. And uh, she's a writer, brilliant, hilarious, um, and a teacher. And uh, she died uh, quite young, some years ago, very suddenly. And um, 
before she died, she did a one person show that I went to go see. I'm so glad I went to go see that show. <laughs> Cause it turned out she wasn't going to be around to do it for very much longer. Um, and at the end of the show, there was part of it where she talked about, um, she talked about people who had died and she had this sort of vision that the people that we love who have left us, that they're right with us, just right on the other side of the veil. And, and they've, they just love us so much and they just want us to be so happy and they want us to enjoy the preciousness of these moments, you know, the taste of the water and the softness of the kitty and the breath moving in and out and saying, cherish these moments, cherish these moments. And I think about her all the time. Uh, I think about Mary all the time and I think about her um, being there in, in, with just a hundred percent love and approval for everyone, you know, um, I don't like think that's actually what happens, you know, <laughs> um, but I love the story of that. I love the story of that. So, uh, yeah. So I encourage you to, to find the moments where, uh, where you're not sad and let those happen. Um, find the moments when you're pissed and let those happen. Find the moments when you're fatigued and let those happen. Kind of without judgment, like feelings are, are flow, right? Feelings are in a constant state of flow. So lean into the flow of it. Absolutely lower your expectations of yourself. I wouldn't try to do anything too epic right now. Like you said, you're really tired and you know, you need to rest. Hungry, angry, lonely, tired, thirsty, right? Take care of those things first. And finally, you know what I'm going to say, which is make some art about it. Make some five minute art about it, particularly about any stories, you know, anything you've got stuck, any, any forgiveness issues, any old stories, anything that just feels like a, just some emotional boulder that you're carrying around with you. Just make some five minute art about it. And whether that's just a ballpoint pen and a piece of typing paper or, um, or, you know, clay or a song or a dance or just movement, like see if you can't get those feelings out and expressed in some way because that will help them transform. Once a feeling takes form, it changes. You change, it changes, the world changes. And you never have to share it with anyone, but I guarantee you the art that you make about your grief, about your solitude or abandonment or about your mom, that helps us that helps us with our abandonment and our solitude and our mom. So uh, if you make something that you would like to share, I invite you to share it because you would help a lot. Martin says, your grief shows how much you love someone. It can, yeah. I dare say this because I've just lost my party, partner of 30 years. I was caring for her at home these last three years. The grief is really something, but so is the love. My heart goes out to you, Lorraine. Oh, Martin, I'm so sorry. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, um, and you know, feelings are complicated. Partnerships are complicated. Parents are complicated. Um, and it's okay to let it be complicated and understand to, um, you know, Cheryl Strayed wrote a fantastic book called tiny, beautiful things. It may be one of the best books I've ever read. Um, and she's such an exquisite writer. She wrote Wild, too. You might know her from the book Wild. Um, but she's such an exquisite writer. She kind of makes me want to quit the business. <laughs> like, you just go, what's that? That's it. <laughs> um, but uh, in, there's a, it's, it's a, an advice column she wrote called Dear Sugar. And she just has some very beautiful takes on some complicated life situations. And one of them is a woman who I think had lost her baby. And she says you know, and the woman writes in all frustrated because like everyone says the wrong thing. Like no one knows what to say to her. She doesn't know what to say to anybody else. Um, people are very clumsy in their expressions of support around grief. Usually we don't have very many systems or rituals for that in our culture. So people don't know what to do. Like this is why rituals exist. So we know what to do. Um, and uh, anyway, Cheryl writes, you know, she says, you have to understand everybody else is on planet earth. You are on planet. I lost my baby. <laughs> and 
it's just going to feel like that for a while. Part of it will may feel that way forever. Um, you know the movie Gravity, that Sandra Bullock movie where she's in space. I think that's a me- I think that movie is a meditation on grief. I think grief is like that. I think it feels very, in some ways, almost very quiet and very separate. And like we're looking back at Earth, going, "Oh yeah, look at all those people on Earth doing all those on Earth things," and here I am, orbiting, untethered alone in peril and there's no one to hear me scream and you kind of have to make a decision to come back or not some people never come back they live in grief and some people say okay i'll try and then it's just one shaky step at a time right so yes, to all of you who are missing those, and especially um, around the holidays, it's, it can be hard with my mascara coming off my face. Of course it is, okay. Um, so yeah, love to all of you. Good, all right, so this is, this is uh, I'm, I'm so interested in this conversation and where it's going. Oh, Andrew Mersman's here, hi, Andy. Uh, Good. Any other questions? Anything anybody wants to say or share or talk about? Um, I'm so grateful for this this opportunity. I'm feeling like maybe I'll do another prayer to sort of wrap us up when we're done. Can you tell I'm making this up as I go? I'll say one other thing that sort of interests me about grief, which is that it... um, you know, other kinds of pain fade, right? You have a painful breakup or, um, you know, something happens that, that hurts and is really hard and painful at the time. But eventually your, your memory of the pain fades. You know, you remember that it hurt, but you don't remember the pain anymore. And often, and again, especially if you're doing your work like you guys are, you get to a point where you feel almost glad that it happened. Right? Like, oh, that was a horrible thing that, you know, getting divorced or that breakup or that experience, losing that job. It was so horrible at the time, but I'm so glad it happened because that's what got me to hear. Or I never would have X, Y, Z if that hadn't happened. So we get to a point where we experience some gratitude even or happiness around that thing that was at one time so painful. Grief is not like that. In my experience, grief comes when it comes, like when it's fresh, you're just in it all the time. And as time rolls out, it sort of ebbs and flows a little bit more. But when it flows, like when it hits you, it's like it just happened that morning. Like the pain is still so fresh. It's so immediate. Um, and I don't know, I don't know why that is. I don't know why um, other pains and disappointments fade and grief loss um, doesn't, of a person doesn't. Uh, So yeah, I I don't really have anything to say about it except that that's what I noticed. Um, Good, anything else anybody anybody has on their mind or anything anybody is worried about or wondering about or, you know, needs needs a hand with? Uh, Yeah, Carolyn, I'm really, I'm feeling your thing about the not being enough and scarcity and you know, there's a lot of belief systems we have that are just habits. Like we're just used to feeling that way, so we feel that way. And so, so to force yourself to notice um, how much there is, you know, how much, there's so much money in the world. There's so much opportunity in front of you. There's so many people who need what you do. There's so many people to love. There's so many people that want to hear what you have to say and hold your hand and be with you. And there's so many opportunities and, and there's no such thing as too late or too old or bad timing. Like there's only this time. How could it be bad timing? There's only this time. You know, it couldn't have happened before because it didn't happen before but it can happen now, right? We see the, the openness, we see the ocean of, of, of possibility in front of us, that's always there. Um, 
Sonia says, you're so correct, Sam, Ray, the importance of allowing the feelings and noticing the good moments, however few at this time. Serious chronic illness and disease has a wonderful way of ensuring that I fully appreciate even the very slightly physically better days, along with the related emotional and mental challenges and micro improvements. Enforced, if not elective, gratitude, I suppose. You have such amazing insight and ways of expressing it, Sam. Keep sending the inspiring emails. They've been wonderful. Oh, good. Thank you. Um, Sonia, I'm so sorry. Chronic illness is a disease is the shit. <laughs> Just, there's nothing to say. Like, I, I don't know. Um, I mean, I don't know how people live through anything, but that it's particularly challenging, I think. Um, and yeah, you just have the opportunity to be super strategic about where and how you spend your energy. And, um, and I encourage you not to get, you know, it's one of the things that annoys me about the self-help world, about the personal development world, is there's often this kind of enforced optimism, this kind of like, like you have to be positive all the time. And if you're unwell, it's because you just haven't been thinking about it positively enough. Like, I think that's bullshit. Um, so yeah, allowing yourself to find the moments of feeling better and allowing yourself to find the moments of feeling enraged and pissed off and deprived. Like, that's okay too. Don't dwell there, but sure. Um, Sophia says, I just came in. So if you didn't talk about it, tell us something about fears, how to conquer them. Um, yeah, so fear can't be conquered. Stop trying. Um, fear is there to, to save you, to protect you. Um, you know, our, our, our fear comes up when, when, we feel, when we feel threatened. And, uh, you know, so the, so the thing to do is, is and, and that's important, you know, like you're supposed to be afraid of heights. You're supposed to be afraid of snakes and monsters. You're supposed to be afraid of losing people close to you. You're supposed to be afraid of other people's judgment, right? Again, we're, we're tribal animals. We're very attuned to the group. It's important to us that people think well of us. That's that's not neurotic, that's, that's tribal living, right? Um, so, I think the question, what's really happening? You know, what, you know, sometimes people can sort of logic their ways out of it, like, oh, what's the, you know, what's the worst that can happen? Literally, what's the worst that can happen? Um, and to even do like a little right hand, left hand exercise. If you've never done that, you write a question with your dominant hand and let your non-dominant hand answer. And your non-dominant hand will look like, you know, kindergarten serial killer handwriting, but that's fine. Um, uh, so just go like, what am I afraid of? And let your non-dominant hand answer. And what about that? What, you know, what does that mean? Keep going. Like, think of the fear as an opportunity to dive in. It's an invitation. You're being called forward to be braver, to be better, to be gentler to be um more ambitious or less ambitious you're you're being invited into something uh, so to understand that as long as what you're up to doesn't have the possibility of really hurting anyone go for it you know don't wait to feel good about it. Don't wait to feel unafraid. Don't wait to feel comfortable. Um, and, and, and know too that this, this, that discomfort, particularly for creatives, you know, this thing we do of putting our work out there, of standing in the spotlight, of, of showing our paintings or sharing our poems, like that kind of exposure makes almost everybody so deeply afraid it's why they think we're crazy. They think, how could that, who would do that? You know, the way we think of like firefighters, like, wait, they run into fire? That's crazy. <laughs> why would they do that? Well, they do it because they have a compulsion to, to help, right? Because they're first responders. Those are the people that they are. And it doesn't, it's not that they're not afraid, but they've learned a lot about it. They're in it together. They train they practice and then they go, right? So same thing with artists. Like it seems crazy to everybody else that we would do what we do, but we train, we practice, we get in community with other people. We look to each other for courage and then you run into the fire, see what happens. And lately I'm into this thing of like, how fast can I fail? 
Like, let's get this idea up and let's see. Like, I'm just assuming that most things won't work. So if anything works even a little, I'm like, oh, that worked a little. Like, what part of it worked? What, how can I double down on that? What part of it didn't work? How can I change or eliminate that? You know, like, get into a state of experimentation. Action. Action is what conquers fear. So we don't conquer fear. We just replace it with action. And start solving a bigger problem. You know? How do I live in the sphere of getting my work out? Or how do I live in the sphere of saying who I am? Like, that's, that's a tiny and exhausting problem. Go for a bigger problem. You know? How do I help that person with their work? How do I share the truth of the world? How do I make a quarter of a million dollars? How do I, I don't know, get, in, get, get a problem that excites you. And don't get habituated into your fears. Um, oh, there's Ames. Hi, Amy. She says, hello, darling Sammy. I love you. Thank goodness you're here giving your goodness. How fast can I fail? Uh-huh, for reals, right? Um, so she says, funny and true, thanks. Good. Uh, Lorraine says, thanks for your words, Sam. I needed to hear the reminders going to the replay as much as I need. Absolutely, absolutely. Whatever, whatever comforts you, you know, whatever, whatever works. We're all just doing whatever works. It's so lovely to see you all here. Um, does anybody have anything else they want to say or share before we wrap up here? You guys have so, been so beautifully courageous and transparent and present. It's been really lovely spending this time with you. I can't wait for our next time. So not we were not going to do this next Friday because it's the Friday in between Christmas and New Year's and I'll be away. Um, but we'll be back the next Friday. So, um, you know, invite your friends. Uh, or don't invite your friends. I don't care. <laughs> Do what feels right to you. <laughs> Good. Uh, Martin says, thank you for creating this space, Sam. You have a beautiful heart. Have a great Christmas. Thank you, Martin. Thank you very much. All right. Should we do one more prayer to wrap us up and send us out? All right. I wonder how this one's going to go. <laughs> let's, uh, let's breathe again. You ready? Let's inhale, two, three, four. Hold, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Mother, Father, Creator, God, we come to you with such humble and grateful hearts. We are so happy to be in circle with one another. We feel the love from this community of people who have gathered in this moment in time to share, to share the truth of the truth, to share the truth of this moment, to understand that what seems like it's happening is probably not what's happening to understand that our feelings are a guide, are a flag, are a, a beacon, but that what is always happening is, is rightness. What is always happening is breathing through each moment to see what is on the other side of that moment. What is always happening is everyone doing the best they can with the information that they have at the time. We are doing the best we can with the information we have at this time. We see others doing the best they can with the information that they have at this time. And as we stumble and fall and stumble and fly, we spread our wings. We catch a breeze. We get borne up into realms we didn't know were there. We see how permeable things are. We see how temporary everything is. We know that so much of what we believe is real is just a dream. Help us cherish that which is real. Help us be a beacon 
reality. We celebrate the touch of the divine in every moment. We welcome it. We feel, we feel like the sun on our face. We feel the love that is all there is. And we'll breathe one more time. Inhale, two, three, four. Hold, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for doing this with me. Happy Christmas.